Welcome back to the Humble Marksman Channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube dripping with that BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. Have you ever had to seriously say, don't put your penis on the cold glass? If you have, go ahead and hit that like button. I'm David, and today we're gonna talk about drills you can do at an indoor range. Now, back when I first started shooting, I only had access to indoor ranges, so I always trying to figure out how to train and kind of where I shook out in the world. This is before I really got started shooting seriously, competing and all that kind of stuff. And I can remember wanting to know kind of like am I good at shooting everyone thinks they're good at shooting well how can you know so I've got a couple drills that you can do that can kind of score you at an indoor range and I'll share those with you now now the only requirement these are single target drills is that you can rapid fire at this indoor range and rapid fire is going to mean faster than one shot per second cadence now provided you have access to that in a carrier that can go 5 10 and 15 yards let's get started now the gun I'm going to use to shoot this test is the Canic rival a buddy uh, over at Patnix solutions if you remember they made adapter plates for like the Mete SFX or whatever so if you got one of the gray guns like I did and didn't get one of those plates that has the rear sight built into it he's offering that and it actually has night sights and a co-witness front now the one downside to this appears to be that the holster that comes with the gun won't accommodate this and the only reason I bring that up is because I'm actually going to shoot these drills for you and you can see how you stack up against me based on my score and my time limit this was done in one take I came to the range specifically to film this video because I've gotten this question so much so how does this this work. So we're going to do basically two, maybe three variants of this drill. The first one is the most basic, and this is how you need to get started if you're new or intermediate as a shooter. I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out, or you can just buy them at your range. But the NRA B8 Bullseye Repair Center, that target is the target that we're going to use. It's kind of a standard. It's really cherished in the tactical community, but that's the target that we're going to use. So the first drill that we're going to try is called a 10-10-10, and this is a good fundamental skills test. I would say the 10 second time limit is way too high to demonstrate mastery or high levels of skill. So how you set this up is you take your NRA B8 repair center and you put it on a target, you send it out to 10 yards. Now starting from a low ready, and for those of you who aren't aware, that's so this is ready, and then low ready is just with the gun at about a 45 degree pointed toward the floor. You're gonna start at a low ready. You're gonna need a shot timer, so you can download an app on your phone, or if you have a shot timer, that's even better. They're kind of expensive, they're about 130 bucks, so if you're not on a competitive guy, maybe just use the app. When the buzzer goes off, you're gonna to present to target and you're gonna fire 10 shots at the target at 10 yards. So 10 seconds, 10 shots, 10 yards. That's why it's called 10, 10, 10. The drill is scored by looking at your hits on target. Be sure and count the number of X's because that's another way that you can track your skill. People have modifications where if you send shots over the limit, then you deduct however many points from your score. I don't do that. I just reject scores that are not under part-time. So if you don't make the part-time, then it doesn't doesn't count, you have to do it again. So it's only 10 rounds, so not too bad. So with the dot and the irons, I'm able to shoot 100 within the par time very comfortably. So if you're shooting scores above about 95 on the 10, 10, 10, then you can maybe get a little bit more sporty and do the test, which is a modification of this. The test is three different strings of fire. The first string is at five yards with a par time of five seconds, 10 shots. The second string is basically the test. You're gonna do 10 shots, 10 seconds, 10 yards. And the third string is 15 yards, 15 seconds, 10 shots. You can shoot them in any order, but generally I always shoot them near to far, and I think that's how most people do it. This is a more complete test of shooting skill because it tests your recoil management specifically at five yards, but even still from a low ready, five seconds is a pretty generous par time. Completely in control of the gun, I'm shooting about four seconds, and if I were to push, it would be low threes to high twos. Completely in control of the gun, I can shoot the five yard string in about four seconds. Now, I can go faster than that. I can shoot this string sub three seconds and still keep most of the points, but we're playing for points here, so I gotta set the mark. At 10 yards, it's going to test you iron shooters more than dot shooters at, at 10 yards a dot's a piece of cake at 15 yards that's going to kind of start to separate the men from the boys as it were because irons are going to become significantly harder the one challenge of a b8 and why i kind of like it is having black sights on a black target forces you to focus on what you're seeing a lot harder. It's easier if you just go to like a high contrast target, but at the same time, you definitely get something out of using the black targets. 
But at the same time, you get a lot of development out of shooting at the black target. So I would recommend, you can use one target, but it becomes very difficult to score. I would recommend using three targets like I did in this video, and then you can just count up 10 holes in the paper and go from there. So on the range, I only shot enough rounds to get the dot zeroed because I had just mounted it on this new doohickey. And then I went straight into the test. I shot the dot first and I was able to shoot a score of 295. Now previously I've heard anything above 285 is a very high score. And I think that was more in the age of irons. I would say that the, the bar really is probably 290 for a dot, maybe even just 295 to be kind of a high level skill. And I shot a 295. Now using irons, I was still able to connect with most of the points and it was either 293 or 290. 92, I'm put it on the screen for you guys. So that is the test. How do you use this information? How can you use it as a training tool? Don't just shoot a test over and over and over again as a way to train. It's a good benchmarking tool. If you wanna train using this style of drill, then I would recommend doing a few things. Don't stay at the testing zone. You have to move the bar higher than what's required. So if you're just being able to start to break that 90 points on the 10, 10, 10, then maybe start shooting the 10, 10, 10 at 15 yards and not 10 or 20 yards potentially, or move the par time down to where you're shooting at 10 yards in five seconds. The point is to get outside your comfort zone and what you can comfortably do and start to push and try and develop the skill to where you absolutely cannot fail when you lower the par time to 10 seconds or whatever. That's how you use training to actually improve and get better and not just turn money into noise at the range. You have to ask more of yourself and be more demanding of yourself. So using the full test as a training tool, you've got a couple different options. If you're able to shoot high scores, from low ready, then introduce a holster draw. If you're still able to shoot high scores, then move every target back five yards and do it again. If you're still able to shoot high scores, then potentially you can reduce the par time by 25% or you can move the targets even further back. You can only count X's. Just demand more of yourself, but don't master something and then move on. When you start to get close to mastery, that's when you push it out and that's when you start to develop as a shooter. You have to stay just in front of where your skill is if you wanna see growth in your skill. One thing that will not make you better at shooting, and this is the most common thing I see when I go to indoor ranges to zero optics and stuff like that, is putting targets at five and seven yards, using bad technique and trying really hard to print small groups but not having the knowledge to know how to grip the gun, how to use your stance, all those kinds of things. If that's you, then I would recommend do some research on YouTube or potentially just pay somebody locally to spend an hour with you and fix your technique and stance, but you have to be open to the reality that the problem is not the gun, the problem is the nut behind the gun is loose and that's you. So hopefully my indoor range bros can get some value out of this and begin to test themselves and develop some handgun skill. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care guys.